In our everyday lives, we're surrounded by concrete jungles, flashing billboards, and the hustle and bustle of the city. This fast-paced life is possible due to the materials which we have around us, from roads that can take us from point A to point B quicker, to pre-cooked meals. It is easy to assume that we have tailored everything perfectly to and for ourselves, and that our engineered materials are the solution to all of our problems. But we must not forget that nature and plants have been around far longer than we have, and have survived the cruel and demanding trial of time. Today we will talk about one of nature's most ferocious, terrifying, and yet fascinating plants, whose hunger for insects has inspired a remarkable innovation known as slips, capable of preventing ice formation on wind turbines, removing that last drop of paint in a can, and maybe even saving your life. Do you ever remember taking a trip with your mom to the plant store as a kid? The first place I always wanted to go to was the carnivorous plant section. I would be fascinated with the idea that plants could eat meat and survive. My fascination ended there, however, as I was too young to really be intrigued by the concepts of why these plants were capable of capturing insects. The remarkable plant that we will be discussing today is the pitcher plant. These plants, as their name suggests, take on the shape of a pitcher. And when clueless insects crawl on top of them, they fall in, getting trapped, and enzymes tear them apart, turning them into valuable nutrients. Nature is scary, am I right? Whilst it's interesting to see a fly slip and fall to its end, several questions come up surrounding this phenomenon. The first question is, what properties do these plants have that allow them to capture their prey? And the second is, whether or not we can copy these properties and produce them in the lab to achieve similar function. Before we answer these critical questions, some background on the concepts of wetting need to be provided. One of the most important concepts that we need to understand is the idea of surface tension. I'm sure that most of you guys watching must have seen videos of paper clips floating on water. And if you haven't, we can check out an example together. Whilst at first sight this can appear like sorcery, it has direct effect of surface tension. If we now look at the still image, we can consider all of the black dots as water molecules and for the sake of simplicity, we can assume that they are in a vacuum. In the bulk of the water molecules, we can see that water is only surrounded by itself. However, at the surface, it has nothing to interact with. This causes an energetic penalty as the water molecules on the surface have fewer neighbors to interact with, resulting in an imbalance of forces and ultimately, tension. Thus, in order to minimize this effect, water works to minimize its surface area with its surroundings. Wetting simply refers to the ability of a liquid to maintain contact with a solid surface. Consider a water droplet on a table surface. If we think about the different phases that we have, we can see that there is contact between the liquid and the solid, as well as contact between the liquid and air, and the air with the solid. This is where Young's equation comes into play. This three-way tug of war can be expressed using the following equation. Young's equation is sort of like the rule book for our droplets adventure. It dictates how much the droplet can spread out on a surface depending on the balance of these forces. So while it might seem like just another equation, Young's equation is really a way of understanding the epic journey of our tiny droplet, translating the complex dance of molecular forces into a language we can understand and use. While Young's equation is one that is important, it only applies to equilibrium conditions where a surface is entirely smooth. In practice, however, no surface is entirely smooth and a surface contains some level of what we call roughness. This allows us to introduce two important characters in our wetting drama, the Cassie Baxter and Wenzel states. These states describe how a droplet interacts with the rough surface. In the Cassie Baxter state, the droplet sits atop the rough surface peaks and air pockets. You can picture this like a hiker balancing on mountain tops. In contrast, in the Wenzel state, the droplet fills in the roughness valleys, and you can now picture our hiker at the bottom of the mountain resting in its valleys. To be more sciency, the two states can be described in terms of contact angle ranges. Cassie Baxter state has high contact angles ranging from 90 to 180 degrees, whereas the Wenzel state has low contact angles ranging from 0 to 90 degrees. With the necessary background, we now have the necessary toolkit to observe how the pitcher plants exhibit their properties. The pitcher plant's rim is known as the peristome, 
and it is key to the plant's ability to catch its prey. In a study conducted by David Labonte and colleagues, light microscopy images were taken of the pitcher plant's peristome. What was revealed is that the peristome consists of both macroscopic and microscopic channels, and we can call this ensemble a hierarchical structure as it forms a structural hierarchy, going from small to big. Within this study, it was noted that macroscopic channels cause anisotropic spreading of water, where anisotropic spreading simply means that water spreads preferentially in one direction. This makes it so that water is directed along channels rather than across, giving a flow towards the digestive fluid of the plant. How is this preferential spreading achieved though? This can be explained through capillary length and capillary action. Think about rain falling from the sky. If you are to look closely, you might notice that the shape of the droplets are not perfect little spheres, but are instead ovals. This effect happens due to capillary length. This capillary length can be defined using the following equation. Here, gamma is the surface tension, rho is the density, and g is the gravitational constant. If we plug in these constants for water, we will find that it has a capillary length of 2 millimeters. Water droplets smaller than this appear round, whereas larger ones have hamburger-like geometries. Whilst this might seem boring and lackluster at a first glance, it actually explains how trees and the peristome of the pitcher plants can have water travel upwards. If a water droplet has a radius smaller than the capillary length, it means that surface tension dominates gravity, allowing water to spread against it. The way trees utilize this is by having capillaries that are smaller than the capillary length of water, and the peristome of the pitcher plant also has this feature. By having small channels, the surface tension can overcome gravity and rise upwards, as can be seen on screen. This is a key natural mechanism that the species has evolved over time in order to help it catch its prey. Now moving on to the microscopic channels. Microscopic channels were found to introduce roughness to the surface, allowing them to enhance the stability of the water films. By increasing the stability of the water films, the wetting of the peristome is enhanced or in other words, the macroscopic channels can remain filled with water. To demonstrate this effect, Labonte and colleagues used the stick pads of stick insects to measure the friction force of the pads when they would slide it along the peristome. They did so in samples containing microscopic channels and ones without. What they found is these stick slip events on samples without microscopic channels, where the pads gain sticking force on the peristome. We can see this when the black curves reach maximas, indicating sticking, which then drop to minimas, indicating slipping. On the other hand, when microscopic channels were present, the friction force plateaued and stayed constant, with no sharp increase in the friction force, indicating water film stability. Therefore, these two channels work in unison to create a wet surface, which causes the pads or feet of insects to aquaplane and to slip and fall to their inevitable doom. They do so by allowing the surface of the peristome to be wet, with specific mechanisms that enhance wetting of the peristome channels and the stability of water films. Inspired by the pitcher plant's ability to create a wet water surface, Eisenberg and colleagues wanted to employ a similar strategy to create slips. As mentioned in their paper, the premise of their design is that a liquid surface is intrinsically smooth and defect-free down to the molecular scale. In addition to their inspiration, they designed slips based on three core parameters. One, the lubricating liquid must wick into, wet, and stably adhere within the substrate. Two, the solid must be preferentially wetted by the lubricating liquid rather than the liquid one wants to repel. And three, the lubricating and pinging test liquids must be immiscible. This is the essence of slips. A porous surface that is infused with a liquid that smooths out its roughness, allowing objects to glide across it effortlessly. The question now is, what is a porous surface? In general, a porous surface means that the surface contains pores, empty space, holes, or whatever you like to call it. The main principle is that there is empty space between the material itself. In their approach, they made use of epoxy resins, which are a type of polymer that meet this criteria of porosity. We can see in the images on screen that there are polymer strands, but in between them, there's empty space that is readily available to be filled with lubricating liquid. 
Thus, by using a porous material and a lubricating liquid and applying the three design criteria, the team was capable of mimicking the nature of the pitcher plant and creating a synthetic version of its mechanism. Now that we have explored the concepts behind the design of SIPS and how it has been inspired by the pitcher plant, we can start examining how it is applied in the world around us. SIPS has a wide range of potential applications and its beauty lies in its adaptability. In the energy sector, SLIPS has the potential to revolutionize the way that we manage and maintain wind turbines. One of the major challenges in operating wind turbines, particularly in colder climates, is the buildup of ice on the turbine blades. Ice accumulation can significantly reduce the efficiency of the turbines by altering the aerodynamic properties of the blades. This not only decreases the amount of electricity generated, but also increases the mechanical stress on the turbine, leading to more frequent maintenance and potentially shortening the lifespan of the turbine. The benefits of this are twofold. Firstly, it would reduce the need for costly and time-consuming de-icing procedures. Currently, de-icing often involves heating the blades or applying chemical de-icers, both of which can be expensive, energy intensive, and harmful to the environment. SLIPS could eliminate the need for these procedures, resulting in significant costs and energy savings. Secondly, by maintaining the efficiency of the turbines, SLIPS could increase the overall productivity of wind farms. This would not only make wind energy more cost-effective, but also contribute to our efforts to transition to renewable energy sources and combat climate change. In the consumer goods sector, the potential application of SLIPS are vast and exciting. Just as the lotus leaf uses its super hydrophobic surface to repel water and dirt, slips can be used to create self-cleaning surfaces. One other promising application is in the creation of self-cleaning windows. Traditionally, windows can be difficult to clean and are often subject to streaking and water spots. However, with slips technology, the windows could effectively clean themselves. When it rains, instead of forming droplets that streak and spot, the water would form a thin, even layer that slides off the window, taking dirt and dust with it. This could eliminate the need for window cleaning, saving time and reducing the use of cleaning chemicals. SIPS technology isn't confined to applications in windows and wind farms. Its potential in the maritime industry is significant. Ships often struggle with biofouling, which is the accumulation of marine life, such as barnacles, algae and mussels on their hulls. This phenomenon increases drag and decreases speed and fuel efficiency. By introducing slips technology, a surface that resists biofouling, the hull of the ship stays cleaner and smoother. This reduces the drag, enhances speed and improves fuel efficiency, offering financial benefits to the maritime industry and reducing the environmental footprint of marine transportation. And now perhaps one of the most notable applications of slips is in its ability to repel human blood and possibly save lives. So no, we weren't clickbaiting you with the title of our YouTube video. SLIPS has been employed in extracorporeal circuits, think of artificial organs outside of the body, and indwelling medical devices, such as medical tubing, which helps prevent thrombosis, otherwise known as an accumulation of blood, which could lead to clotting. By using SLIPS, blood can flow freely and continuously without forming life-threatening clots, which could be the difference between life and death. On top of its ability to allow for continuous and smooth blood flow, as already mentioned, SLIPS's anti-biofouling properties are definitely noteworthy for these healthcare applications as well. By preventing bacteria from growing on these sensitive parts of a patient's body and medical devices, a sterile and safe environment is ensured. But SLIPS doesn't only benefit large industries, it also has everyday applications that could improve our lives. Imagine a ketchup bottle treated with slips. The ketchup would slide out easily, leaving no residue. Or a paint can, where every last drop can be used up, reducing waste and saving resources. To wrap up, slips is a promising technology that could influence various industries. By replicating the unique adaptations of the pitcher plant, we can create surfaces that are not just slippery, but also versatile and robust. Section 7, Outro. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the wondrous world of wetting. We hope you've enjoyed learning about the science behind some of nature's most intriguing adaptations and the innovative technologies they've inspired. Stay curious, keep exploring, and remember, the smallest of interactions can lead to the biggest of innovations. As you guys can see, we're a new and small channel and we're currently piloted by just three people. 
Our goal is to deliver interesting scientific content and also to inspire others to find the fun in science. We would highly appreciate it if you could subscribe to our channel, like our video and share it. We also are entirely open to any comments uh, you may have about the video and we would greatly appreciate your feedback. Did you like our style or are there things we could do better, things we could add? Be sure to let us know. And until next time, we will hopefully see you in our next video, which will be based on a famous cold-blooded reptile whose abilities have also inspired new technology. Bye-bye and until next time.